Hi everyone and welcome to today's little video on completing the square. I know I keep starting my videos this way and it is awesome to see you. Thank you very much. I love completing the square. I love algebra. It really does make my little mind tick. I'm loving doing these videos for you guys, but I would really, really desperately like a little more, a uh, few more subscribers. Doesn't that sound needy? Yes, it does. If you have the opportunity to do so, please, please, please click that little doohickey in the corner and subscribe to my channel. You'll get to know when there's new videos. Uh, and if you can, let your friends know as well. Now, as I normally do, at the start of lessons, I'm going to look at the stuff with the red arrow above. Um, now this is part of a quadratic series where we can uh, basically sketch quadratics, solve quadratics, and there's lots of different ways of doing it. This particular video is sort of an extension of the one we've done before where we're going to look at understanding how to complete the square, uh, understand really why we are completing the square, and how to use it to find turning points and y-intercepts, and from that point, uh, you know, find the general shape of graphs. That's a general idea of why we are completing the square. Now I'm going to show the algebra in this lesson, and as it goes on and on and on, as the course goes on and on, there will be more about graph sketching. In fact, I've already done the graph sketching video, so I'm sort of doing these backwards. But you're not to know that because you've just switched on. Now, for those of you who followed along, I actually gave my particular teaching group a booklet all on quadratics. And the great thing was they went through all of this to try and sort of learn for themselves how quadratics look and the relationship between the different ways we can write a quadratic equation and how we can sort of glean different information. Now, if you're watching this out there, you don't have that booklet. At some point, I will add a link to the booklet below that maybe you can work through. I'm pretty proud of, of the booklet and, and how it's worked. But what we came up with uh, in my particular group was there were three main ways we can write a quadratic. Oh, easy for me to say. One was the expanded form or the general form. That's the one that most times we get. This one here is called the completed the square form or turning point form. And, and I don't want to rush ahead. And this one here is what we call the binomial product form. Bi meaning two and product meaning time. So there are two uh, brackets here that are multiplied together. Now what I want to be able to do is move from the expanded form to the completed form. But to be able to do that, we have to be able to sort of look at expanding brackets. Now again, a previous video has looked at expanding brackets. But I want you to notice what happens when I expand the brackets and the coefficient I get. So in this situation, when I expand y equals x plus 3 squared, please, 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 in internet land, remember that that is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3. Now using FOIL, for those of you who don't know what FOIL is, it's first outside, inside, last. So first times first, which gives me x squared. Outside, which is plus 3x. Inside, which is plus 3x. And last, which is plus 9. So when I multiply these together, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9. What do you notice about this plus 3 and this plus 9 here? All right, park that. We'll come back. Here's another example. I've got y equals x minus 6 squared. Right, okay, so what do we get? We get y is equal to x minus 6, x minus 6, which gives me x squared minus 6x minus 6x and plus 36, which when I simplify, it gives me x squared minus 12x plus 36. There's my answer. What do I notice about that last number in comparison to this one here? Well, one more. All right, one more. What do I get? So I get y is equal to x plus 5 squared is equal to x plus 5 multiplied by x plus 5. Now, I'm just going to turn around and say, it really, really worries me that some people think that when I do that, I just square the x and I square the 5. And that's my answer. And hopefully if you're out there, please, please, please don't do that. It's horrible. And it leads to all sorts of mistakes. So, once again, I get x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25, which gives me x squared plus 10x plus 25. So, have you noticed what's actually happened? Yes? Well, fingers crossed. What you're beginning to notice is that this number here, when I square it, so when I do plus 3 times plus 3, I get this number on the end. When I do minus 6 times minus 6, I get this number on the end. And when I get plus 5 times plus 5, I get this number on the end. That number on the end is going to become quite useful to us. But I want to carry on and then just come back in a second. So I'm going to do the same thing. All the ones we had before didn't have a number on the end, but this one now does. So well, let's do the same thing. So y is equal to x minus 4 squared plus 6, which is x minus 4 times x minus 4 plus 6. 
multiply up my brackets, which gives me x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16, and then I'm going to add another 6. x squared minus 8x, and then adding those two together gives me 22. All right now, in this situation, this number outside here and that number 22 don't have any relationship to each other. But we did notice that we had 16 somewhere now working out. To be able to get to 22, I took this square number and added 6 on. Now, this is where some exciting stuff starts to happen. And only a math teacher could say that. I don't know why I just said that out loud. So I'm going to get rid of this foil for a moment. I want you to compare y is equal to x plus 3 squared and y is equal to x squared. Nope, don't need that bracket. Try that again. x squared plus 6x plus 9. I want you to compare y is equal to x minus 6 squared and what the expanded form of that was, which is x squared minus 12x plus 36. One more, y is equal to x plus 5 all squared, which gave me an expanded form of x squared plus 10x plus 25. Now, yes, we noticed that when I squared this and squared this, I got 9. Slightly different when I didn't have a number here, but I want you to now go back and say, what do you notice about plus 6 and plus 3? What do you about, uh, notice about minus 12 and minus 6? And what do you notice about plus 10 and plus 5? We've now actually come up with a bit of a link. If I've got the expanded form, it would appear I can go back to my bracketed form using a simple fact of it's this middle number and halve it. Now, I'm going to leave that for a moment here, but I'm going to use that now for this question. Right, so I know that I've got x squared minus 4x. I know my rule has something to do with half of that number there, so I'm going to do y is equal to, and I'm going to put in brackets, x minus 2, and I'm going to square it. And then I'm finished. Yes, that's the end of my answer. Uh, mm, careful. Now, I want you to now notice that we need to sort of go back and say, well, what would actually happen if I did x minus 2 squared? That's x minus 2 times x minus 2, which is x squared minus, I'm going to shortcut this, and plus 4. Oh, hold on a moment. This equation here actually gives me x squared minus 4x. Good. We wanted that. We wanted to start with an x squared. We wanted to start with a minus 4x. But here it gave me plus 4. I don't need plus 4. I need plus 8. That's not funny. Oh, hold on a moment. How do I get from plus 4 to plus 8? I can just add 4, can't I? So if I add 4 to that bracket there, then I promise you they are now exactly the same and I have just completed the square. No way, yes way. Look, I'm gonna do it again. X squared plus 10X, all right, so Y is equal to X plus five all squared. Now, when I multiply that out, hold on a moment, we already know what happens when I multiply this out. We know that when I multiply this out, I will get x squared and I will get that plus 10x. I just need to check, will I get minus 12? Go back to my original question. My original question is, what did you notice about this number here and this number here? This number here and this number here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, when I square this, when I multiply that out, I'll end up with 5 times 5, which is 25. I'm actually going to end up with 25 as a number. But what do you notice about this number here? It isn't. 25. It's minus 12. So what I actually need to do is go from 25 and get it down to minus 12. So I'm going to take away 37 because if I've got 25 and I take away 37, I will get minus 12. And I promise you those two are the same and I've now completed the square. One last question, or maybe two last questions. I'm going to do them a little bit quicker so that this video doesn't go on for like nine and a half hours. So, yes, can I complete the square? I can. Y is equal to bracket X minus three all squared. Minus three, uh, oop, gave you the answer. Not minus three all squared gives me nine. I don't want nine. I need minus ten. So how do I go from nine all the way down to minus ten? Well, hopefully... Take away 19. 
and I've completed my square. I love this stuff. It is amazing. One more. Y is equal to X plus 10 all squared. Well, I know that 10 squared, this last number here, 10 squared is 100. I don't want 100. I want 90. So how do we get from 100 to 90? I'm going to take away 10. And again, you can check them. Put them into your calculator. Try and work it out. This stuff is freaking awesome. Now, at the moment, all the questions I've done actually have, what do they have? They have even numbers in the middle. Still works with fractions. A little bit more working out, but it still works. So, ladies and gentlemen, this one here becomes y is equal to x plus, now I'm going to write 9 on 2, all squared. The reason I'm going to write 9 on 2 is because that's 9 divided by 2, 9, which is what I do to that term. Now, a little bit complicated, and I know some of you are going to go, ugh, fractions. 9 on 2 squared is the same as 9 on 2 times 9 on 2, which gives me 81 on 4. Ah. <sighs> Do I want 81 on 4? I do not want 81 on 4. Now, here is another way of actually thinking about this. Sorry, I've got actually I. I'm going to get 81 on 4. I don't want it. So I'm going to take away that 81 on 4. Now, I'm now going to get back to just having this. If I take away the 81 on 4 I've got and I don't want it, I'm just going to have now that x squared plus 9x. But I need plus 5. So I'm going to add 5 onto the end. Now, sadly, completed the square form does not get left like that. We don't allow it to be written that way. This has to be one number. So I'm just going to show you what we do. So I now need to do 80, minus 81 on 4 plus 5. Well, I can't add fractions unless they're both fractions. So I'm going to divide that by 1. And I can only add fractions if the denominators are the same. So I'm going to times both the top and the bottom by 4 to make the denominators the 4. So that's going to be divided by 4. And then I'm going to uh, times that to become 20. So minus 81 on 4 plus 20 on 4 will allow me to rewrite my equation as x plus 9 on 2 all squared minus uh, 61 on 4. Now you could write that as a decimal, but generally speaking, we do not. And there we go. That is my completed square form. Again, I know it looks gross. It's not. Completing the square is fine. Most people just don't like fractions. Now what about this one? Complete the square? Uh, you're going to turn around and say, well, there's no x term in the middle. There's no, what do I half? Do I half the 16? Uh, 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 no, actually, ladies and gentlemen, I have just BFT'd you. This is a big fat trick because actually that's already in completed the square form. If you look at what completed the square form is, it's something squared and some sort of number, which can still be zero. That number can be zero. Does that fit what I've got? Y is equal to something squared plus or minus a number. Right, that's already completed square. And for those of you who are observant, it is also DOPS. You noticed it again, didn't you? Yes, in one of my previous videos, suddenly one of those numbers magically changed. Why? Because I just want to make it slightly easier for myself that we're not here for nine hours doing videos. What do you notice here? Well, you're going to say, oh, it's okay. I can do y is equal to x minus 12 all squared. And I'm going to say, no, sadly not. What did you notice about all my previous examples? What was the number in front of all of my x squared terms? It was a 1. Now, completing the square form actually works perfectly when there is a 1 in front of my x squared term. And sadly, in this term, there isn't a 1. It's a 4. But the good news is, ladies and gentlemen, I can actually do something pretty funky. I can take the 4 out of a set of brackets. And I'm going to write square brackets for a moment to give me x squared minus 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 6, x plus 11. Now, do you notice the x squared term has a 1 inside it? Yeah, well, actually, I'm going to break that out. I'm actually going to pretend that's my question. It's not. Don't get tricked. I've actually just broken it out. I've done it in a different... My fingers missed... Won't be said. Look, oh, I've got my fingers. That's terrifying. Anyway, uh, but the point of it is, I'm just sort of breaking it out. I'm doing a side calculation to help me. So x squared minus 6x. Well, I can do the completing the square here. x minus 3 all squared. Minus 3 squared is 9, so I've got 9. I don't want 9, I want 11. So I could take away the 9 and add 11, or I could just work out that the difference between 9 and 11 is add 2, and there is my completed square form. Now it's not finished. I now have to put that back in place. The 4 was there. Here's my square brackets. x minus 3 squared plus 2. And again, 
Because maths has a convention, we can't write it that way. We have to multiply it out. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4, which gives me 4. <laughs> Try that again. I'm going to multiply everything by 4, which gives me 4. x minus 3 or squared plus 8. Remember, you have to multiply everything inside my bracket. So the completed the square form there was 4. x minus 3 or squared plus 8. Now, later on in, in, in different videos, we're going to talk about what the 4 and the 3 and the 8 actually stand for. But here's one more example. So, what do you notice? Is the x squared got a 1 in front of it? No, so I'm going to try and take out a common factor. And in this situation, y becomes equal to 2, actually goes into each of those, which gives me x squared plus 14x plus, wow, what's half of 96? That'll be 48. Good. Right, does my x squared term have a 1 in it? Yes, so I'm going to actually complete the square, which gives me x plus 7 all squared. Oh, this is good, this is good, this is good. Right, so uh, 7 squared is 49. So if I square this out, I'm going to get 49, but I want 48. How do I get from 49 to 4? Take away 1. There we go. So having done my breakout, I'm now going to break it back in to give me 2. X plus 7 squared minus 1. And that's not my completed the square form either, because I must make sure that I multiply it out, which gives me 2. X plus 7 squared minus 2. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, completing the square. Now, the good news is your calculator can actually do this for you. Okay, so loading up my CAS. Uh, you'll notice I've already got the equation uh, set up. So I'm going to use this equation here, the y equals 2x squared plus 28x plus 96x. And every time I touch the screen, my calculator switches off. It really should be a keep on top function. Possibly there is. Anyway, you'll notice I've already put my equation in and I'm using the Casio class pad as a calculator. If you've got the TI Inspire, I'm sure it does the same thing. Uh, I might do videos on those a little bit later on. But this is what I do. I'm going to actually highlight my equation and I'm going to go edit and I'm going to go copy. Then I'm going to hit menu and go into conics. Now conics is just awesome and it says put in your conics equation. And I'm going to do edit and paste. Now, once my conics equation is, now, a word of warning, it has to start y equals. If you don't put it as y equals, sadly, it doesn't work. I'm now going to do fit, and it says fit into conics form. And you'll notice up comes like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different ways of doing this. Thankfully, I'm only going to deal with one. And what you'll notice is I want this third one here. Yeah, so I've highlighted the third option. And when I click on it, OK, up comes mind is blown to open bracket x plus 7 squared minus 2. This is this is just amazing. Now, the great thing about this particular uh, function on my calculator is uh, I can actually do it backwards as well. So if I go to x minus 4 squared plus 6, I'm actually going to load back up my calculator. Let's delete that one there and we'll do uh, open bracket x minus 4 close brackets all squared plus 6. Yeah. And now what I want to go is I'm going to say fit into conics form. And in this situation, I'm going to choose that fourth module there, ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the standard form of my quadratic equation. I'm going to click on OK, and there we get x squared minus 8x plus 22. Now, there are other forms on this calculator that I could actually do. And the great funky thing is that I can get my calculator to do lots of different things. Um, but, well, I think that's pretty much it for this lesson. Yep, I've shown you how to complete the square. So I'm going to put a tick against a successful lesson. Thank you very much for watching. If you have the opportunity to subscribe, then please do so in a moment. A little subscribe button will come up. And I'm, again, deeply, deeply grateful for anything you can do to help support me. So yes, there is that subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, sign up, hit it, and uh, let the love begin for the Mass Guru channel. And otherwise, there's a video over there loading for you as well. It is, as ever, a pleasure seeing you. This is the Mass Guru, signing off.